Hey everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, based on whichever time zone you are joining us from. I welcome you all to this breakout session at .NET Conf. I hope you and your family are staying safe and healthy and you are having a great time in this conference. If you are watching this session on demand, I welcome you as well. My name is Weba Gujral. In this breakout session, uh, we are going to talk about Azure Static Web Apps. We will see how we can build and run a Blazor app in an Azure Static Web App and also how we can power our app with an Azure Function-based API endpoint. Before we get started, I would like to quickly introduce myself. My name is Weber Gujral. I'm based out of Omaha, Nebraska, currently working for Kivit Corporation. I'm a Microsoft Azure MVP and a Microsoft Certified Trainer. I'm a Microsoft Certified Solutions Architect Expert, and I hold numerous other Azure role-based certifications. I run Omaha Azure User Group, which is a community of over 900 people. I regularly speak at uh, user groups, events, and conferences like this one on Azure-related topics. I regularly blog on webhubgujral.com. You can reach out to me on my Twitter handle given over there. With that, let's jump onto the presentation. To start with, if you are not new to Azure, you would be aware that running static websites in Azure is not new. Azure offers a storage service called as Azure Blob Storage, which is accessible over HTTP. It essentially allows you to host your static content. It is very simple and straightforward. If it's just static HTML files that you want to run in a cost-effective way, Azure Blob Storage is a great option. But as your application grows and you need more functionalities, it might need some effort on your side to set up the website correctly. Uh, as Azure Storage is not a web server, it doesn't offer an option to do some common task like setting up custom domains or provisioning custom TLS SSL certificates. You need to integrate your Azure Storage account with uh, Azure CDN service to do some of those tasks. Azure Storage offers some more challenges like it doesn't support default documents. It uh, doesn't provide a way to return custom error pages when, whenever there is an error in your website. Another option you might think of uh, to run your website, static websites could be plain Azure App Services, which is a highly scalable hosting platform for your web application. It comes with loaded features like uh, load balancing, auto scaling, REST API, uh, auto scaling and security. It is primarily intended for uh, hosting uh, dynamic web applications and REST APIs and mobile backends, and is quite not necessarily the best choice to run uh, static websites. Then comes Azure Static Web Apps, which is uh, the topic that we are going to talk today. It's a new offering which is currently in public preview. When I say public preview, do note that it is supported by Microsoft, but it doesn't come with an SLA. Hence, I will not recommend you to use it for any production workload until it goes GA. Um, Azure a Static Web Apps is an, app is an Azure service which automatically builds and deploys full stack web applications to Azure from, directly from a GitHub repo. When you create an Azure Static Web App resource in Azure, it automatically sets up a GitHub action workflow in the GitHub repo and monitors a branch of your choice. Every time you push commits or accept pull requests into the watched branch, the GitHub action automatically builds and deploys your app and its API to Azure. Azure Static Web Apps is ideal for static websites that you are building using popular libraries and frameworks like Angular, Vue, React, and Blazor. In today's presentation, uh, we'll be using a Blazor app for demonstration. You can create an Azure Static Web App directly in Azure Portal or through Azure CLI. You can also use a Visual Studio Code extension to create your Azure Static Web Apps from Visual Studio Code. Like any static website, when you create an Azure Static Web App, there are two pieces to it. The static content, which is your HTML, JavaScript, or CSS files, which is served through geographically distributed locations. And the serverless API endpoints, which for Azure Static Web Apps are powered by Azure Functions, and they behave as a backend for your websites. Let's talk about some of the core features of Azure Static Web Apps. As I said, they, they host static content like HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and images. It supports popular web application frameworks like React, Angular, and Blazor, and it also supports static site frameworks like Gatsby, Hugo, and Viewpress. As I was mentioning in the last slide, it comes with an integrated API support powered by, powered by Azure Functions. 
Azure Static Web Apps comes with a first first class GitHub integration. As I was saying, it creates a GitHub action workflow for you automatically. And yes, there is no support for Azure DevOps as of now. In Azure Static Web Apps, all your static content is globally distributed. It comes with some powerful features like free SSL certificates and custom domains. It supports seamless security model with a reverse proxy when calling APIs, which uh, eliminates the need for configuring cores. Azure Static Web Apps offer integration with most of the popular authentication providers like Azure AD, GitHub, Facebook, and so on. Azure Static Web Apps also support a couple of built-in authorization roles. And you can also define your own custom roles and assign users to those roles. Lastly, <clears throat> sorry. Lastly, Azure Static Web Apps auto-generates pre-production versions for your app whenever there is a new pull request being created against your branch. We'll go through some of these features shortly in this presentation. Here's a workflow for an Azure Static Web App. Uh, you if you have a Git GitHub repo hosting your code for your static website, then you can create an Azure Static Web App in Azure and link your GitHub repo and branch with it. Azure automatically creates a GitHub Action workflow in your repo the moment you create a static web app. GitHub Action monitors uh, your branch in the repo, and whenever there is a pull request which is completed or created, GitHub Action automatically builds and deploys your app and API to Azure. Do note that in, in case of an Azure static web app, you don't have to create an Azure function separately. It's created as a part of Azure static web app. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, create an Azure Static Web App. Uh, right now, I have taken a sample from Microsoft, for our which is a Blazor Starter template, which I have also cloned locally. If I run it locally, I can show you what it say shows. But in the meantime, I will go back to my Azure portal where I have already created my resource group where I want to create an Azure Static Web App. I'll go ahead and click on add. I'll search for a static web app. I'll click on create. And here is my GitHub repo. As you can see, it has it's a Blazor app. It has my API sits in my API folder, which has a function here with weather forecast function, which returns my uh, forecasted information for weather. And here is my client application file sitting, which are all Blazor files. I'll go ahead and uh, choose the subscription and resource group where I want it to go. I'll give it a name, .NET Con Demo. I'll choose a region where I want to deploy it. You will notice here that this queue is defined as free since I was mentioning that this service is currently in preview, hence Microsoft is uh, offering this for free, but the moment it will go to GA, Microsoft will also introduce certain paid plans uh, to which you can link with your static web apps. The next thing I need to do is, is to link my GitHub account. I'll go ahead and authorize my GitHub account to be linked to my static web app. The moment it's authorized, it lists my organization. Within organization, I can choose my repo. It's the same repo where I have uh, cloned my code there. And then I can also choose the branch I want my static web app to deploy to. The last thing I need to provide here is the framework that I'm using for my application because based on that, as I said, Azure Static Web App will go ahead and create the GitHub Action workflow for building and deploy my code. Uh, since I'm using Blazor, I'll go and choose Blazor, but you can see the different options that it offers. I'll go ahead and as you will see, it will automatically show app location, the API location and artifact location pointed to the correct directories. I'll go ahead and click on review plus create. It will take hardly a couple of seconds to create the blank resource. And it will also go ahead and create and GitHub action workflow. I'll show you shortly. Let me click create. And as you can see here in my actions, this action workflow has just been added and triggered. And here is my Azure Static Web App, which has been generated with this URL. If I will go and click here, it says my Static Web App is live and waiting for your con content. And also, you can see uh, my deployment history. It points to the GitHub action runs in my repo. 
Likewise, I can go ahead and edit my action workflow YAML file, which has two jobs, build and deploy job. And once the application is deployed, it goes ahead and closes the pull request. I'll go here and look into the actions, what hap what's happening in my action workflow. As you can see, I was showing there are two uh, jobs, build and deploy and close pull request. As you can see, my build and deploy job is in progress. Once this is done, my code will be deployed to the Azure Static Web App. And this does not only deploy, the, deploy my static uh, content, but it also deploys my API, which is a function. I'll give it a, a few seconds. By that time, it gets ready. Let me see if my function has started showing up. So any function or any API that I create using Azure Function as part of my static web app shows under the Azure Static Web App uh, blade under the Functions tab. Let me see if it is being deployed. It's up, it has uploaded the package to Azure. Now it's deploying it. It will take a few seconds to deploy the code now. I'll go ahead and refresh my site and see if it's still, it is not updated yet. Let me give it a few more seconds. And to, to uh, reiterate this workflow, I have not added. This was added by Azure. And if I will go ahead and I can show it to you under code, this directory and within the directory, the YAML file, which helps, holds my workflow was added by Microsoft and looks like my application has been deployed. I'll go ahead and re refresh it. And here's my Blazor starter app, which is running. Here's a counter, which works fine. Here is my fetch data uh, view, which is uh, fetching the weather information from my function. I can go ahead in developer tools and ensure that it's calling my function. I'll go to the network tab and I will refresh. And as you will see, it's calling this API running within my Azure Static Web App, which is the same as the function that you have seen here. Here is the weather forecast. And if you want to have a look at my code, here is the function, weather forecast function, which ret returns the data that I'm displaying over there. And these are my static pages. You have just seen how easy it is to create an Azure static web app. Uh, let's look into some more concepts. The first thing I want to talk about is API support. In the demo, I did show an API endpoint based on Azure Functions, which gets deployed with your static content. Though it is powered by Azure Functions, there are certain limitations that you should be aware of. Uh, to start with, the API route prefix for your endpoints must be API. Secondly, API must be a JavaScript, TypeScript, C Sharp, or Python as Azure function. Next, uh, if you are defining route for your API functions, it only supports redirects and uh, securing your routes with roles. We'll talk about routing in next slide. And next, the uh, Azure function supports many triggers for if you are creating an Azure function resource, you will be aware of that. But when you are using Azure function based API endpoints with Azure static web apps, it only supports HTTP trigger. Lastly, these API endpoints don't support the classic Azure Functions logging. And if you want to log your API endpoints, you have to use application insights. Let's talk about how routing works in Azure Static Web Apps. You can define your routes for your static web app as an array of rules in a file called as routes.json, which should sit in the root of the build artifact directory. Now, based on the framework or library that you are using, the build artifact directory might differ. For example, for Angular, it might be assets. For React, it might be public. And for Blazor, it will be www root. Routes in static web apps lets you define two things, backend routing rules and authorization roles. The backend routing rules define how your requests are routed. And the authorization roles define the user roles. The rules then you 
the rules that you define in routes.json are executed in the sequence as they appear in the array. So do uh, note that the sequencing of your uh, rules in the file is important. Next, each rule defined in the routes.json file can have one or more of the listed properties. To start with, the route property defines the route pattern that is requested by the caller. For example, in the example in the demo that I have taken, it was slash fetch data for my fetch data view. Serve defines the file or path that is returned from the request as a response. Allowed roles, as I said, defines the array of role names. And once we define al allowed roles array uh, for a route, it restricts the route to the users belonging only to those roles. Lastly, status code defines the HTTP status code returned as a response for the request. Now, once you have defined your authorization roles in uh, routes.json using allowed roles uh, array, you can use a feature known as invitations to associate users with the roles. The users can be authenticated against the supported providers like Azure Active Directory, GitHub, Facebook, Google, and Twitter. Azure Static Web App supports uh, two built-in authorization roles, anonymous or authenticated. As the name suggests, by default, every user belongs to built-in anonymous role, and all logged-in users are members of the authenticated role. You can assign authenticated to all allowed roles property that we discussed in the last slide to restrict a route to only authenticated users. And like the built-in roles, you can also define your custom roles, and there is no defined rules that govern those role names. Many times you need authentication related user data as well in your application. Azure Static Web Apps offer a direct access endpoint, which is a utility API that exposes user information. The API is exposed on slash dot auth slash me endpoint. Here's an example of the routes.json file. As you can see, there is a route uh, slash profile to which all the authenticated users have access to. And here authenticated is a built-in role. Then there is a route customer slash contoso to which only two custom roles, administrator and customers contoso, have access to. Likewise, you can also define the content that needs to be served on each route request. For example, for the route slash calendar slash star, it returns calendar.html. Do note that it does support wildcard characters as visible in this example. You can use platform error overrides array to redirect users to custom error page to uh, in response to those errors. For example, uh, in, if the error type is not found or 404, it returns a custom 404 error page. Lastly, you can also define the response headers and the MIME types associated with your routes. Last but not least, as I mentioned earlier, that st Azure Static Web Apps generate pre-production environments for every pull request created against your branch. These pre-production environments in Azure Static Web Apps provide a full flash staging environment. When a pull request is created against a branch that the action workflow watches, a pre-production environment is built where you can test your changes before pushing your changes to production. And then once you merge your pull request to your main branch, the changes are merged to the production environment and your pre-production environment is deleted. Microsoft documentation says that uh, multiple pre-production environments can coexist at a time. But since this service is currently in public preview, it only supports one pre-production environment. Be aware of the fact that staged versions of your applications are currently accessible publicly by their URL, even if your GitHub repo is private. Let's go back to our demo to see a few more things that we just discussed. So I'm in Visual Studio now in my code. I will go ahead and create a new branch out of my main branch. It will create a local branch for me and make it working branch. I will go ahead into one of my pages. I will go in index.razor. Instead of hello world, I will say hello.netcon. I will click on save. And then next thing I'm going to do is I will go in the www route directory. I will open routes.json. You will see it has a route defined here, which is which returns back index.html for every request with a status code of 200. 
since I mentioned in my presentation that uh, a route uh, that you define in your routes.json are executed in sequence, I'm going to add a new route before my generic route. And for fetch data, I'm going to return fetch data.html, which is one of the files I have, which one of the views in my application. And I only want it to be visible to certain users. I will add an array of roles that I want to give permissions to. Let me give permissions only to administrators, let's say. I'll go ahead and click on save here. I'll go back to my changes and push my code changes back in. I'll commit my changes. As changes to the project, I will commit those. I'll go and push my code changes to GitHub. The moment my code changes are pushed then I'll go back to GitHub. And you will, I'll, I'll refresh my screen. As you will see, it says that there is a recent push for my temp branch. I'll click on compare and pull request. I'll see my changes. I have made two changes, one in the view and one in the routes.json file. I'll go ahead and create a pull request. The moment I have created a pull request here, you will see uh, there is an action which gets triggered based on my temp branch, which executes the same action workflow that I have shown earlier, build and deploy job. I'll go back to the Azure portal, and here is my Azure function a static uh, web app that I have created earlier. I, this is the function that I had here. The next thing I'm going to show is environments. What is going to happen here is the pre-production staging environment that that will be created based on the branch that I have created. It will show up in a few seconds. But before that, I also want to go ahead and invite a user to my application so that the user can access. So I'll go and click on invite. I can choose any of these provided authentication providers. For the time being, I'm going to use Azure. Active Directory. I'm going to add myself. I'll leave the domain as is. I'll go ahead and add the role. If you remember, I have provided administrators. I'll copy this just to be double sure and paste it here. And I will generate it. It generates an invite link. Since I have already logged in through this live account, I'll go ahead and click on that. It will ask me to grant a consent to that application so that my user account should be able to connect to it and it lets me in i'll close that window for now and i'll close this i'll go ahead and refresh this now you can see that a user identity has been added here which is linked to an azure active directory and you will see that it has been assigned three different roles where anonymous and authenticated are built-in roles and administrator is a custom role that i have added let me go back to my workflow and see where it is if it is deployed it is still updating let me go back to azure portal in environments and see there you see that it has created a new staging slot for me which has the title same as my pull request and it is linked to the temp branch it is right now uploading and you can see the status has become ready as my workflow would have been completed i'll go ahead and click on browse and you will see that it has my latest changes, hello.net conf. Next, what I'm going to do is I'll go back here. My workflow was completed. My test, I have tested my change. I'm going to go ahead and approve my pull request. I'll merge my pull request so that my changes can make to production. So what happens again is now it will merge my changes to master branch. So it will trigger my workflow twice. It will go ahead and push my promote my changes from my temp branch to main branch, as well as it will go ahead and delete that staging slot. 
I'll go here and refresh here and see if it has started deleting it yet and not yet. Once it's done the last demo, if time permits, I'll show you if I have still got access to that site or not. By the time this gets completed, I will go here and show you one more thing. Slash art slash me is the endpoint that Azure Static Web Apps provide to capture the user information. As you can see, this is the user detail. These are the user roles that the user belongs to. Let me go back to environment. <clears throat> you can see that the status is deleting here now. It's deleting my staging slot because it is promoting my changes to the production branch, production slot. Let me see the it, the fun of the task is completed where it is deleting the pre-production environment. Let me see where it is, if it has pushed my changes to production yet or not. It is still going on. The changes are still not reflected. I'll go here. Likewise, you can also go ahead and add a custom domain that you own to your static web app. Uh, you, if you own a uh, domain, you need to get a CNAME entry added in your DNS server. Once you have that added, you can provide your custom domain here and you should be able to validate your custom domain here and add it to your website. And since this is a ARM um, resource, in Azure, you can actually apply all the Azure RBAC policies as well to this resource. Let me see if these changes are completed. This is complete. Let me go and see if my changes are pushed here or not. You can see, and since I'm logged in into this, I am able to fetch the data. Oops. As you can see, I'm able to fetch the data because I have logged in through the authentic authenticated user. Here's the extension for Visual Studio Code that lets you create Azure Static Web Apps within uh, a Visual Studio Code. And whatever I've shown you in Azure Portal, you can do it in Visual Studio Code as well as Azure CLI. That's pretty much I wanted to talk about Azure Static Web Apps. Here are some links that I have used for my presentation. And I hope you will find these helpful. I have listed the GitHub starter template link as well from where I have taken the application and the doc link to the documentation for Azure Static Web Apps and the Visual Studio Code extension. With that, I conclude my presentation and I would like to answer as many questions as time permits. Otherwise, thank you so much for joining. Bavit, thank you so much for taking the time to present to us. We're unfortunately right at time. There's only one question. So what I recommend okay. you do is go to Twitter, look for the hashtag, uh, hashtag .netconf, and you can answer it there. And I you will. can start the conversation there. But thank you so much for taking the time to present and share your talent with us. Thank All you. right. Thanks so much.